Well, it's finally here. Blender 2.8, the beta. Uh, it's finally here after a long wait, a lot of talking about it. Um, it's finally here. So we got a whole bunch of new features. We got a new interface, we got workspaces, we've got um, this new real-time renderer. Uh, lots of features that we've wanted in Blender for a very long time, and uh, and now it's all here. So, for a bit of backstory, Blender typically moves in incremental releases, like you know 2.71, 2.72, and there's you know like small features or or bug fixes between them. Um, but this has been a uh, a milestone release. Personally, I reckon they should have just called it version three, um, because it's so big and different it's basically new software so i think they should just call it a three but anyway it's 2.8 and we're all very excited so the official version is going to be out in um like middle of next year like june 2009 um but you can play with the beta now and it's really stable like you'd think that beta would mean that it's going to be crashing every five seconds but it's not i haven't really seen it crash that often honestly um probably about as much as a stable release so it's really, it's, it's really solid. I'm making this video to share some of my favorite features, what I'm most excited about, um, and also to the existing users, um, you know, what you can expect when you first open it and how to sort of orient yourself with the new interface and everything. So it's gonna be three parts, um, but let's start by getting into the interface. So the first thing to talk about is of course, left click select. You can now select with the left mouse button. That's right. No more right click, um, which was uh, previously the way you selected in Blender. I made a video uh, five years ago talking about why I think that having it as right click select as a default was, uh, we were really shooting ourselves in the foot because although there was um, uh, some slight benefits to having things as right because then you could select other things with left, there was a few instances where that would work. I felt like they were marginal and uh, the, the loss that we were enduring by having right as select was that newbies opened Blender for the first time and they couldn't even take their first step by selecting something without having to Google how to do that. So uh, I, I thought that was uh, pretty, uh, you know, a pretty solid reason why we should just make it left and be conventional with, uh, with the rest of the world, with the rest of the computer world. Um, so anyway, so left is select, and if you are a pro user and you do actually like right, no problem there. You can just change it in your settings up there. You can also change your spacebar action, which is now play by default to play an animation. If you prefer it as search, which is what it was before, you can change that. If you're a crazy person, I guess you can make it tools. Somebody must like that or else it wouldn't be there. Um, I actually don't mind it as play. Um, and then search, if you keep it on, on play, search is then just F3, which I've actually gotten used to because I've been using the beta for a while. Um, yeah, um, as well as that, there is also, um, when you've got something selected, you can now click off something and it will deselect it. So I got that lamp there. Just click into a blank area of the canvas and it will now be deselected. You can also drag select over everything. Look at that. You don't need to push B to know that's the box tool or whatever, although you can still hit that. Um, now you can just drag select. So it feels a lot like just any other program that you use on the computer. Even it feels like your operating system, right? Because the operating system, you left click select, click off something into an empty space, and then drag select to select other things, right? So now Blender has those, those conventions and I've noticed myself like it's handy when you're just when you're working with other software when you flip back to Blender you don't have to like reorient your brain to go like oh I'm also I got to select with that and I can't use this button I got to use this like it it just feels a lot smoother like I'm a pro user and I've I've like I I loved it straight away pretty much it's uh it's just been phenomenal selecting everything is still A but deselecting everything is now Alt A previously you just double tapped, like A to select and then A again to deselect. So now it's a separate function. Alt A to deselect, A to select. Now, when I first saw this, um, I was like, oh no, that's that's a terrible idea. Like, why has we got another shortcut we've got to add to the list? Why not just keep it all as A? But then I realized, like previously in Blender, when I've, you know, when you've got a whole bunch of things uh, 
selected and then deselecting them, you end up doing it like three or four times just to like verify that you actually are in a deselected state. Um, so it's actually nice now because now I know when I hit Alt A, I know for sure that it is deselected and A is selected. You can actually double tap A and that will deselect everything. I don't actually find that that handy because sometimes it's like you hit it at the wrong timing or whatever and it doesn't it doesn't recognize it. Um, but anyways, if you do actually like it being just like A to, to toggle, um, just check that little box there and then it will go back to the way it was um, in Blender. But I actually like it as Alt A. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's also a uh, tool section over here on the left hand bar. Um, now that was previously in Blender didn't have any symbols. It was called things like translate, which nobody would know meant move. And also when you clicked it, it was like your cursor's over here, but your object's <laughs> moving. It was pretty, it was a little janky. Uh, now you've just got buttons like this. So a newbie, a newbie that opens Blender for the first time, they don't need to learn like I gotta hit G to move an object. They can click the button that they're most familiar with and go, that looks like a move tool. They click it and then they go, oh look, I can move, right? And then later they can learn that G will actually be the, the shortcut, which will, which will um, do it for them. So that's the mark of good user interface, usability is when you've got, um, you've got the, the shortcuts for the pro users so that they can move and operate fast, but you've also got visual indicators um, for, for beginners who don't wanna have to Google everything um, before they can you know do something very basic. Speaking of which, there is also these up here in the top right, these little gizmo-y things. Uh, this one to, I guess, move that view, uh, this one to toggle in and out of the camera, this one to toggle orthographic and perspective mode, zoom in and out, and this little gizmo thing here to move around, which I think will be especially helpful whenever you're working on a laptop, because uh, we've all had that moment where you, you bring up Blender and then you're like, oh, I got a trackpad, how do I do the, <laughs> you know? So now you've got this, so it's, you know, gonna be handy for beginners, but also for anybody that's on a, uh, on a, on, on a laptop. And by the way, if you wanna disable this, cause you're not in any of those boats, I uh, just disable that right there and then they disappear. We also now have um, workspaces. So these little tabs at the top here. And we had workspaces before in Blender, but they went in a drop down. So it was another click to click them. Um, and also the, uh, the defaults weren't that great. I feel like they were kind of um, hastily put in there. So I don't know too many people that really used workspaces that often. I think I just used the compositor. That was the one I just went default and then compositor whenever I did compositing. Um, now they're separate little tabs. And when you click on them, it will actually enter the state um, that you are like, so it's modeling, so it's actually put me into edit mode. So I don't have to uh, have to do that. Um, sculpting will put me in sculpting mode. It's got the right mat cap selected. It's got all the tools down there, uh, animation. Um, it's very, very cool. So that's nice. Um, and most exciting of all, we now have proper layers. Um, so they're called collections in Blender. These are them up here in the, in the outliner. So layers, layers in Blender previously, and I say layers with uh, sarcasm because, I mean, they were layers technically, but they weren't what anybody would know were layers. Um, they were these little squares at the bottom of the screen, right? So you would have an object selected and then you go, I'm gonna move it to the second layer, right? The second square in this weird grid. Uh, you couldn't rename them, so you would move things to a new layer, and then you would just have to remember later on when you've got hundreds of objects and trees and plants and you're building a huge environment, and you're like, which one had my trees in it? It was this one. And you just had to cycle through it to find what you were looking for. Um, so it was very frustrating, and also it was restricted to 20 layers, um, which uh, for large uh, production work, that was a problem. So now, thankfully, we have collections. So this is a collection here. We've got our three objects inside this collection. So I can make a new collection just by right-clicking, saying new, and then I'll call this one meshes, put my cube inside the meshes, and now we've got two separate layers or collections, right? Um, you can also move the collections inside other collections, which is handy as well. Um, 
And also there are, there's another way you can add something to a collection, which is like if you just got an object it's selected in the viewport, if you hit M on your keyboard, M for Mary, um, you can move it to an existing collection or make a new collection. So I'll call this lamp. Lamps. Uh, there we go. Um, also, if you hold down control, you can isolate the layer, which is handy, and Alt-H will bring everything back. Um, if you want to drag select, I, I, I feel like that will probably be in there eventually, um, but currently it's B, the box tool select, um, which is not my favorite function, um, but it was handy when I learned that, that it was B. Uh, you can also, um, using the plus and minus keys on your number pad, you can um, expand them or, or shrink them. I'll put a link in the description to a video that discusses all this more on uh, collections, so you can go over that. Um, a few other little interface changes. We've got uh, some icons down here. They were previously, um, they were up the top, which was very frustrating because obviously when you got a lot of buttons at the top here, I mean, it actually, this is the first time that it's not off the side there. Um, maybe because I don't have anything selected. Uh, maybe it was like, yeah, there you go, right? So you had to like pan along to actually see all your icons, which was frustrating. So now they are vertical, which is nice. Obviously, the one thing a lot of people are talking about is the design of these icons is a little hard to see or understand currently. Um, I would agree with that. Some of them, the icons, I feel like aren't the greatest. These ones at the top here, these are pretty good. I haven't, like I've adapted to these. These ones, uh, like that one, I know that one. I know that's textures. That doesn't look like particles to me. And I think the, the worst of all though is that the lamp, this icon actually changes depending on what type of lamp it is. So there's been plenty of cases where I've got a scene and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, wait, where's the, where's the lamp uh, icon? And then it's because it's changed because it was an area lamp, not a point lamp. I think it should definitely stay as a solid icon in my opinion. But you know, it's a beta, it's a beta. Things, things might change. I don't think print works for me. I feel like every time I see it, I'm like, I'm not printing anything. Um, but anyways, I think, uh, and a lot of people said that they wish there was colors, which I definitely agree was nice about the old one. It was easier to identify them. I spoke to William Rainish at the Blender conference and he said that the reason that they are now um, all the same color is because it now will adapt to the theme. So if you change a theme previously in Blender, you could change all your colors and black and blue and all that. These would always stay the same. Um, so apparently you can actually change these colors in your theme settings to give them different colors. So I've heard, I haven't tried it myself, but that's an argument for that. Maybe I think like, if that's the case, maybe the default should just have colors on them. I don't know. That's for a long thread somewhere in the internet where everyone can talk about it. The next big changes are to do with the viewport, how this looks here, which is very cool, as well as the EV rendering engine, which is super exciting as well. Um, I was gonna put it in this video, but uh, I think this video has gone on long enough, so I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna put it in part two, which you can uh, watch by clicking now on your screen, that little box and watch part two. I'll just keep doing this until you click it. Oh, so demeaning. All right, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>